It's really interesting having conversations with my kids about what my life was like when I was growing up. All the time they're like, oh, what did you do and who were you with and, and what was your house like? Tell me that story about the horses and tell me those stories about when you would sing to the crops. And I think it's really super interesting that upon telling these stories, they can kind of get a little bit of an image of what it was like for me growing up with my parents. I mean, they know my parents, right, as, as their nan and pop. They have got a bit of an idea about what it was like, but the stories that I tell kind of helps them to go, oh, you know what, my mum was a kid as well. She's been through some stuff that I've been through as well, and I think it's super, super powerful. So we all like hearing stories. We all like, not everybody likes telling them, but so many people like hearing stories because it helps us feel like people, other people are understanding us, like they're getting us, like maybe they've been through some similar things to what we've been through and maybe they can relate. So today, what I wanted to talk with you about is the power of storytelling through your marketing whilst you're growing your authority and whilst you're growing your own personal brand. So let's talk today about all of that and so much more. talking about is so super powerful and I think often underestimated unless we're reading a novel or something like that. So when it comes to building your personal brand, when it comes to you being able to connect with people, think about the people that you have been the most inspired by. Now I know for me the things that super inspire me are hearing stories and, and hearing people recount their own experiences where they talk about the kinds of the shit that they've had to go through, the way that they've owned, the way that they've been inspired, the different things that they did to get to where it is that they are today. I mean, think about Oprah's speech at the Golden Globes, the, the, that really, really big one. You know, she talked about being a child, sitting on the linoleum floor, hearing that that very first black person receive the award, and then how she was the first black woman to ever been ever have received that award. But she recounted sitting on the floor watching the Golden Globes in her home when she was a child. And now there was she like in receipt of one. It was really amazing. I got goosebumps listening to it. You know, some of the other amazing stories about how people who have been absolutely struck down by something completely terrible and how they've been able to claw their way, claw their way back to being the kind of person that they are today, inspiring and motivating people. It's through these stories that we connect, that we can start to relate a little bit more emotionally, that we can start to build empathy with other people. Most of all, though, people want to know that you're human and that we weren't born fully formed, being the amazing people that we are today. I mean, we were amazing when we were born, but it's taken a lifetime of, of trials, tribulations, challenges, and building resilience in order for you to be able to get to where it is that you are today. And that is more often than not more inspirational for people than hearing about how much money you made last week or hearing how many, you know, how many clients you enrolled last week or, or any of that kind of stuff. They want to hear about the nitty gritty stuff. Some of the stories that I talk about, you know, when it comes to building resilience is how it took me 18 months to be able to really make any kind of real money in this business through researching, through testing, through measuring, doing everything on my own. I live in the middle of freaking nowhere. I had three kids. My husband was barely home for half the year. It was really fucking hard. And I'd given myself, and my husband had actually given me as well, like one more month to start making money. Otherwise, I was out of my ass getting a job. Not literally out of my ass, but I had to go and find it. I was going to have to go and find a job. And I was like, no freaking way. I know I can make this work. And then there was those times where it, it took me two years. My daughter, my oldest daughter, was going through so much emotional stuff, nitty gritty, you know, hardcore shit where I didn't think she was actually going to survive. I, I thought, I really thought I was going to end up burying my daughter. And 
I don't think any parent wants to go through anything even remotely similar to that. And some things that I had to do, I made the decision to, to really scale back my business, to stop traveling as much, like anywhere near as much, to changing the way that I ran the business in order to be able to really help her get back on her feet. And that was really, that was a freaking hard time. And, you know, after all of that, I ended up kind of suffering a bit of a breakdown because going through that level of stress and pressure for two years is, you know, freaking full on. So everything hasn't always been sunshine and lollipops and roses and, you know, let's all make a million dollars and go shopping in the fancy stores and, you know, run retreats and travel the world and do all of this stuff and everything's fantastic because it really wasn't. There are lots of amazing things throughout that time though, but I guess the reason that I share a lot of these stories is because you still have this ability to go through the shit and to be able to help more people. And that's the kind of stuff that your people want to hear from you. They want to hear, it doesn't have to be like you fighting to keep your kid alive or you you nearly being broke and having to get a job. What have you worked through though that you can share with people? Because that's the stuff that's really going to be able to connect and, and build empathy. Of course, they also want to hear the amazing fun stuff. Like these times that I've been, been able to travel to Vegas and I, and I made the most amazing friends and I've had the most amazing experiences there that I wouldn't trade for the world where it's so amazing, such amazing learning and some of the best fun that I've had ever in my life doing the stuff that we were doing. You know, it was, it was the best. So how can you talk about the things that have been really transformational for you? Why are you doing what you're doing? How have you ended up here? What has been the shit and the quagmire and the quicksand that you've been able to extricate yourself out of, either with help or on your own? What are the things that you have done in order to achieve these really awesome goals and, and hit your stride? And, and what caused you to make the decisions that you have made? Now, in terms of framework, the way that you want to tell these stories and, and just have this somewhere rattling around in your head and it will become a lot easier the more you say these stories and the more you practice it, where were you at that point? You know, if I use a story with my daughter, I remember I was, I was actually running a retreat and it was that we were on day three of running this amazing retreat up on the Gold Coast in a beautiful, amazing house overlooking the beach. It was fucking brilliant. And I had a phone call from her school where she'd had this major thing happen and she spoke to me and she asked me to come home. I'm like, dude, I'm in the middle of running a retreat. Like I can't just come home. So we had a bit of a talk and I made these decisions whereby I needed to leave early. So on Friday morning, this, is, this call happened on a Wednesday and I was having a major breakdown, which is not ideal when you've got clients in the room. We ran through the Thursday and that was fine. And on the Friday, I Friday lunchtime, I left. So we wrapped up about half a day early in order for me to be able to get home. And I don't know how anybody can possibly withstand that much amount of pain and that much heartache. It was just, it was absolutely ridiculous. So I got home and we did what we needed to do. And it meant that there was a whole lot of, there's a whole lot of stuff that needed to happen. And where I am now and where she is now is that she's just doing so amazingly well and I'm really super impressed with her level of resilience and the way that she's been able to, you know, really come back to being the, the, the person that she is today. The way I told that story is where I was, what I did, where I am now. So that's the kind of stuff that you want to think about as well. You know, what are the other things that have happened in your life? I've got domestic violence in my history. You know, that was not really awesome. Not with my current husband. Or my, he's my first husband, but, but not, with, not with the man that I'm married to today. Uh, you know, there's other things, you know, around previous mentors and making decisions around programs. And all of this is demonstrating your humility, your ability to be a human, and your ability to openly share. And that is some of the most powerful ways that you can build brand. It's some of the most powerful ways that you can build connection and that you can build rapport. And it helps you to be seen as being reachable, touchable, and, and a human being, right? And, and remember, like people buy from people. So think about the different kinds of stories that you can tell that relate to your people as well, that relate to some of the big fears that they have, the big objections, the things that they want to create. If they're looking up to you, how can you use your stories in order to be able to lead from the front? 
If you need some help with this, reach out, let me know, and we can have a conversation about how you can become a client of mine and, and work through all of this and use this to build your powerful brand, your authority, and your positioning in the marketplace. My name is Nicola, and I can't wait to see you in the next video. Bye.